So you got your license, kudos to you. You've been selling a couple of insurance policies and it just seems like it's not working out, okay? <laughs> been there, done that. Your your revenue that you thought you were gonna make, the commission that you thought you were gonna make, based on how it was advertised to you, based on how it was sold to you, you're just not making that right now, right? And all you've seen is that your money is going into third-party expensive ads, buying A leads or B leads, and you're like, what is this? <laughs> Somebody save me. <laughs> so, uh, listen, I'm here to save you. Hello, I just came to save you. <laughs> so, the thing about it is insurance agents, and it's not our fault because we were tricked into this, okay? It, when we get in the industry... We are, in my opinion, focused on the wrong equation, wrong side of the business model when building our business. So instead of focusing on uh, things that's going to generate revenue, we focus on, I got to know all about the products. Do you know how many products there is when it comes to insurance? There's so many, so many. Yes, there's term life, whole life universal and all that and there are products that are built all around those three but the idea is there's a lot and I can spend my whole time trying to learn final expense when the next client that I got is a fit for IUL not final expense so what happened with that whole time I've been spending learning final expense <laughs> Jesus what happened to that so let's turn that on its head <clears throat> if you are Saying to yourself, listen, I can agree with you. I, I can literally hear the comments going off right now. Like, Sherry, I, I totally agree with you. That, that's me. What product should I study? What all the uh, what all the stuff that I need to know? And reality is, and I told one of my one of my girlfriends who just got in insurance, so she didn't have the chance to make all the mistakes that I made. Kudos to her. But I said, I said to her, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm excited. I want to get in. What product or services should I? be working on and I tell her none <gasps> none are you kidding me Sherry none you're saying I should not be studying any of the product or services none so <laughs> and I know if you're listening to me like what you told her she don't need to spend time st studying the product or services how dare you how dare you <laughs> all right so true to the matter is it's not that not is knowing the product or service is great, but but you can know the product or services all day, but that's not what gets you clients. That is not what's gonna get you clients today. Because reality is the client don't even know you know the product or services till they get on the phone with you. Your job is to at least get a phone call now, today. Your job is to at least get in front of people who wants your product or services. That should not be a focus because once you are able to get your calendar filled with the right target audience, once you're able to get your calendar filled with the right people, the right prospects that's ready and serious about getting insurance, right? Then the other part, yes, is knowing your product or services, but we put product knowledge in front of marketing and that's why our money is not moving. Mm -hmm, I'll wait. We put product knowledge in front of the main thing because I don't care how smart you are at knowing insurance product. If nobody's coming to you for you to sell those products, what sense of knowing them? Right? It, it just makes sense, right? So, and, and, I, and again, I know this is not something you were taught because your upline is not a marketer. Okay, so as a marketer, as an insurance marketer, I can tell you that you need to focus first in learning how to market you, market your brand. And the reason why that need to be your focus is because when you start learning how to market your business, when you start learning how to market your products and services, then people are going to come up to you because you don't know who's going to come up to you. I can put a video out about term life, whole life, and I get a, a client about final expense. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> what happened there, right? And now I got to learn final expense. But here's the thing. 
I don't know about you or the company you're with, but I know that anytime I'm writing a policy and I may not be familiar with the policy because maybe I was new to the industry at the time, I always have somebody I can reach out to. Some group chat I can that can I answer my question. Some someone within my industry, within my upline that I can go to. So the pro, so the product knowledge is second, not first. There's oh, as soon as you get your your license i think we try to fo- tell our downlines and all these people focus on knowing the policy inside and no inside and out where reality is there's so much policy there's uh, there's um, there's so much product excuse me you don't know what to focus on so i'm here to tell you i'm here to relieve you you should spend 80 percent knowing the knowing the how to market your business and 20 percent the product and in this video, I'm going to go over with you how to master the insurance marketing so you can market your business as the credible expert that you are. Because when you learn how to market, and market doesn't mean, hello, hello, market doesn't mean like, oh my God, I don't know the product, so how am I going to market my business? Hold up. People don't buy from you because you know your product and services. People buy from you because they like your character. They like your spinality. I make up my own word. People like you because they like your own personality. That's why they're buying from you. They're not buying your product and services. They can get insurance from anybody. So you got to know the psychology of insurance marketing so you can generate leads and when that leads come knocking at your door you have hopefully you're in an industry or you're you're with an IMO or FMO that can help you and support you when that person come along but baby knowing the product or service is not why people come to you <laughs> truth is half of the people that market themselves online don't even know what they're talking about <laughs> so let me dive into how to master your insurance marketing go ahead right now and make sure you grab your notebook to write with we're going to dive right in okay so number one mastering your insurance marketing step one is making sure that you define your target audience i said define your target audience making sure you define your target audience who you want to sell to let me see that who do you want to sell to knowing your target audience is knowing your audience will help you to tailor your marketing effort effectively they say riches is in the niches so don't try to market all these different products to everyone you a confused mind don't buy step two <laughs> research your competitors as in Go and take a deep dive into what your competitors are doing. What strategy are they using? What sets you apart from them? It may be just exactly what I just said. They're not buying your message. They're not buying your product. They're buying your message. They're buying their stuff. Like, can I see myself as you? Can I, are you unique? You know, they're finding out, does your personality, does your brand, does your energy fit me? You can find unique ways to stand out in the marketplace. So make sure you're researching your competitors. Number three, build a strong online presence. Are you not using social media right now? Like if you're in the, in, in the space, it's a digital age, right? In today's digital age, having a robust online presence is crucial. And it creates an appealing website that showcases your services, have your testimonials. It shows you as the expert in your space. Let me tell you something. You have to leverage a social media platform to reach a wider audience. Can you believe that you actually don't have to burn your gas to knock on people's door to sell insurance, right? Social media platform reach a wider audience and engage with, and it helps you to engage with potential clients. So really knowing the, using your online presence, you cannot go wrong at all. Step four, create a compelling content content is king baby and content is doesn't have to be i'm educating you just on the policies and i'm educating i'm educating you on why you should get life insurance right so using video marketing to educate your audience about insurance option industries trends and top tips that will set you apart 
do you, do you get this? By showcasing your expertise, you're able to build trust with your customers. So the psychology of marketing is not about how well you know your product. It's about how well you can resonate. You can connect and nurture with the people who tune in to your content. I hope that makes sense. And step five, utilize your SEO strategy. Optimizing like your website and your social media platform, your social media Facebook page, within one minute of me going to your page, I should know exactly what you do. Because these keywords and meta description, they're interlinked on your pages and people will find it when they Google it. This will boost your visibility in the research, in the search results and drive organic traffic to your site. Organic, that means you're not paying for these traffic. They're organic. Hello, can we say saving money? Uh, who likes saving money? And number six, this has always been one of my go-to networking and referrals. Connecting with your professionals in a, re uh, in a related industry, such as like real estate agents or financial advisors, this helps to establish a partnership because they may not do exactly what you do as a real estate agent, but you guys can cross promote each other and referrals can be an individual source of lead for both party involved so it's always good i have a, a real estate agent that she sent me leads and if, if if my client need help with real estate i send her leads so we have a cross partnership that we work with so really networking with people who may not specifically in your industry but they can partner with you so that's that's awesome and number seven that is highly overlooked and is one of the most valuable thing to do is embracing email marketing when you have built an email list and send a regular newsletter or subscription to your email list, what happened is you build a relationship. You're able to nurture your people in case social media go down. Hello. So sharing updates and promotion and changes that's maybe take going place in your marketplace is important to having that email list because email lists provide a personalized message and, and it makes sure you kind of provide value in that email list so they can know what is going on? And I want to add a bonus here as we, before we wrap up, I want to add a bonus as regardless of what the seven things that you choose to do that I just uh, mentioned, do understand that you need to be tracking your effort using analytical data tools to monitor the success of your marketing campaign because it helps you to identify what strategies are working and what need to be adjusted. Right, so if social media is working for you, where you gotta figure out where are all your leads are coming from. Ask yourself this question. Where have the last five leads that you've received came from outside of referral? Because continuous improvement is the key to staying ahead in this competitive market. And let me say this, if I'm, do, if I'm on social media, I'm on social media to generate leads. I am not on social media just to hang out and talk. To people and you know this is a business and you got to treat it like a business so when you're generating your leads on social media or you're doing it through email lists or you're doing it through your website you need to know which one is working you need to know is it through com the, the competitive market you need to know which one is is working because when you figure out the area that is working for you then guess what you can say goodbye to all the other things that are not working and just hone in on that one, one, one area. For me, that's social media. Social media as in YouTube and Facebook was working for me. So I didn't really have to hang out at TikTok that much. And I, I don't even hang out at LinkedIn. I just focus on a few platforms, putting myself out there. And that's how I was able to generate leads to my insurance business. So I really think when you go honed in, in a, and, and just really give good value in one area, that will really change the way you do business and help you to master your in the insurance marketing to be able to control your own leads. Now, let me say this, being able to control your own leads, I have a whole video all on how to um, control your own leads. Put leads in a comment, I'll make sure I send that video over to you. But I just wanna assure you that when you start in this industry, your job is to learn insurance marketing first and then the product second, because it's in the doing of the product, in writing the policy, you get to know it better, right? It's in the doing. So 
how are you going to focus on your insurance marketing? What are you going to do? What is the strategy you're going to do to increase your visible so you can be findable? Comment.